Back then, a nation mourned the fallen of that faraway conflict. Their sad return home, a regular feature on the nightly news. The years have passed, but not the pain of those touched by a controversial war. The deaths of soldiers like Luke McCulloch continue to impact not only their families, but those who served with them. Luke, an Irish ranger attached to three para, had been based here at Sangin, an outpost that came under daily attack from the Taliban. His comrades recall the assault that took his life. A mortar landed no more than 10 metres behind me and the shrapnel just took off in different directions. I couldn't see because of the dust. My hearing had completely gone. I couldn't hear anything. I knew there was screaming. But I looked down, whenever the dust started to clear, I looked down and, 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 and my, my desert combats were all red. It is an image Trevor Coult will never forget. The blood was not his own. Luke had just fallen over. The shrapnel had went into the, his head and, and through his brain and he was just lying to the side. Um, I was, a, I'm going to be honest, I was in battle shock. Colour Sergeant Richard Spence also lives with the memory of that day and the young soldier he'd persuaded to go to Afghanistan. Spence, who's now retired, was himself badly injured in the same attack. At our base gas, uh, about 20 mortar bombs fell within about two minutes. I got picked up off the ground, thrown through the air, some considerable distance, uh, landed almost upside down, had no idea where my weapon was. Uh, I just remember that smell of cordite uh, ringing in the ears. He recalls a desperate helicopter evacuation under fire during which Luke McCulloch died. We had no time to strap in uh, and we were literally rolling about the fuselage with the tail gunner, uh, engaging as many enemy targets as he could. Uh, and as we claimed the altitude, I remember glancing over before I got into the seat. Uh, the medic uh, given a wave off uh, that indicated that uh, Corporal McCulloch perhaps uh, had, make it, had made it. And it was, it was a very difficult period, not only because of the contact, uh, but when you're on uh, a Kazivak helicopter, uh, with some of your own soldiers who are wounded uh, and you're in the role of the team commander and you know one of the soldiers has died in front of you, uh, in, fr in front of their colleagues and in front of you uh, and, and you convince them to come in the tour. Uh, all those things hit you pretty quickly. Uh, uh, and as we flew back to Boston, uh, we just remember glancing over uh, once in a while hoping uh, that they could revive Luke and perhaps they were mistaken. Uh, and then you just couldn't look anymore. Uh, you just looked out of the... Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I've never, uh, never spoke about it before. Luke was a good friend. Uh, and, and I convinced him to go to Afghanistan and sadly he didn't come back. Do you wrestle with your role in encouraging Luke to go to Afghanistan? Every day, every day, uh, because you always ask yourself that question. Uh, what if uh, I'd have done this uh, instead of doing that? Uh, and that's just a burden you just have to have. Uh, and I don't think anything will ever change that. What happens to that burden over the years? Does it change or not? No, for me it doesn't change. Uh, sometimes as you get older it becomes worse uh, because you think, you know, where would Luke be now uh, in his life? So many years on, but those painful questions and the memory of a good friend lost never go away. Emma Murphy, ITV News.